average day in my classroom looks like a couple of hours on math, a couple hours in language arts, and a couple hours on something extra like science or social studies. The structural techniques that I use in the classroom to help kids understand what we're doing is letting them choose what they're passionate about to research. So giving them choices helps my kids make sure that they're not stuck in the little square that I've made for them. They can build upon whatever they're passionate about in that area. I feel like when I stand up in the front of the classroom and lecture, I'm owning the learning. I'm the one worried about making sure that everyone receives what I've said. But if I've asked the kids to own their own learning, then they're going to have to be able to teach me something and show me that they've learned it by teaching me or their classmates about it. I definitely think that there are standards behind everything that we teach. I feel like it's my objective to figure out how can I match that standard to that piece of technology that those kids are using or another piece of technology that I'm aware of that would enhance what they're learning and they would you know, find it more exciting as opposed to the five paragraph essay. There's a trend I think with technology, getting a device and using it as an app machine and I think that that's not necessarily where we should go with them. I do think that there are tools that we can use in lots of different ways, just like a textbook is a tool. Um, I think it's how we use them that's the most important part. Los Spanish Unified School District is an organization of 11,000 students, uh, grades TK through 12. Uh, we want our students to reach their highest potential, whether it be college or career ready. We will start for the best. When you walk in, I like to see that the learning is relevant, that it's uh, realistic, that students are engaged, you know, there's innovation and there's excitement when you walk in. That's what I look for. It's very valuable. Technology is a, a good tool to enhance instruction. It can make learning more relevant. You know, it's not, a, it's not a substitute for teaching, but it can enhance the teaching practice. One classroom, and we talked about the, the technology use earlier, but if you look at the classroom of the future, you, can, you have the potential to have a situation where we don't have absences because all kids will have access to the curriculum whether it be at school, they can access it at home. All of our sites are very tech rich. I mean, a lot of, some of the schools already have one-to-one -one initiatives. So there's lots of technology in the school. Our community would like to see students that are career ready, mm -hmm. that can come in and look, and look at that industry in Los Banos and be prepared to do those positions or those jobs. And there are a lot of jobs out there where they may require some technology components. It's imperative for our kids to have the skills to be able to perform those jobs. When I started to teach theater, my idea was I need to know where these kids need to be when they graduate high school because one of the biggest industries in California is the media, performing arts, and entertainment industry. So our kids need to know how to compete in that world. So my idea is like, let's stay goal focused for how do we get those kids to compete in that world. Thinking about that, I think, well, what is right here? What is tangible for them? We have Playhouse Merced. We have Merced Theater, and we have the Merced Multicultural Arts Center. So I like to reach out to these businesses and find out what skill sets they would like to see in an employee. We have internships with Playhouse Merced and Merced Theater. Year one, we had students who piloted the internship with Merced Theater that ended up working after high school for Merced Theater. This community has always been about collaboration. And what I learned in my experience is that you have to collaborate, you have to network. And that is, that's a soft skill that, that you can't really teach with paper and pen. You can't really teach it in like a very structured classroom environment. So you gotta teach students to network through collaboration. So we're here at this high school and we have so many valuable assets. We have a culinary class, if we're doing a dinner, we're not going to pay someone else to do a dinner. We're going to pay our culinary. We're going to network with wood shop if we need a set built. I want to teach these kids when you don't have a resource, you reach out and network for a resource. That to me is a very important soft skill. That is what's teaching them to be career ready. Students who experience college and high school tend to do a lot better when they move on to college. We want all of our students to leave with college credit on their transcript. I think what we look for in the classroom is relevance, real world application, students being engaged and having that excitement in their eye. 
being collaborative, working with other students. We're trying to really move to skill-based outcomes along with content mastery. Ms. Kirby's classroom and the drama department here does a great job of a lot of cross-curricular collaboration. I know she works with the culinary program for her dinner shows. I know that the art department helps uh, with her sets and the graphic arts department helps her with her, her programs. And I think that is the real world. You know, it's uh, working across industries, working with people with different points of view and different ideas, putting it all together to produce a product, or in this case, a production. Our students need to be prepared for the world they're going to go into, not the world we went into. We have 32 different CTE pathways. So that gives kids a broad kind of view of industry so they can have different experiences and, and really be exposed to what's out in the real world while they're in high school. I love helping people reframe what it is to teach math, what it is to learn math, in a way that really opens the doors so that more students can access the mathematics. And I just love sharing that with everybody, a way to make math more accessible to everyone. I'm a math coordinator with the Merced County Office of Education, and my job is to travel to all the school districts across the county and help them improve the way they teach mathematics. Typical day would be a big combination of some training with the teachers. Then we will go into the classroom and I will role model with the students what the teachers had just learned about. And then we debrief what we experience. What I'm doing in all districts is trying to develop an ambitious math system that we're teaching in a student-centered way. The three read protocol it's an integrated ELD experience where we are integrating strategies that are good for English language learners. And a th the three read protocol is where we read the same math problem three times and each time we read the problem as a class, we have a different prompt. The growth that happens when kids do it three days a week, 100 days a year, is just profound. And so that's the power of the three read protocol. Dwayne has done a great job demonstrating that he's an expert in the field of mathematics. He's helped bring the growth mindset in mathematics here, where it's not, oh, I'm just not good in mathematics. No, we just have to look at it from a different way. The expectations are different. What we expect from our kids now is different. We don't expect kids just to regurgitate information. We expect them to take information, process it, and do something with that. And if we're truly creating 21st century learners, then we need to make sure that we're at least doing the best we can to provide 21st century learning opportunities now. And Dwayne has been instrumental. I mean, the whole county office has been, has been instrumental in bringing that, that mindset here and helping us to really move forward with mathematics and looking at it in a different way. That's what I see as innovative learning. McSwain is very fortunate in the support it receives and from all over the county, both county office, our school board, our administrative staff, our teaching staff, and, and most importantly, our community. You don't get to do amazing things without support from the community and the family, so I'm very fortunate.